Good morning, everybody. Thank you for listening to ACL. All right. My cotton, this coffee is like yellow. Well, it's because we have so MC, the, we have MCT oil in there and a mushroom blend. Yeah, it's in a, regular coffee. Have you you know cordyceps like comes from literally like so like a, like I don't want to call it parasite, but like a worm in the ground. Really? Yeah. Yeah, we have that in there. Yeah. What happens is a fungus invades the brain of this like of this bug, this larvae. And then the thing grows a mushroom out of the top of it, and the, the cordyceps physically under the ground. It's a big, chunky-looking worm, like maggot thing. Oh, that's crazy. Isn't that so nuts? it's insane in the membrane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> insane in the brain. <laughs> I got a parasite in my fucking brain. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I could just picture, like, some southern drawl dude, you know, like some old, crusty guy that's as hard as fuck. It's been, I got a parasite in my brain. He's like, just, <laughs> just, pull it and just pulls it right out. <laughs> yeah, some people are whacked. Speaking of, <laughs> I have something in my brain. Yeah, <laughs> tell me what about you have in your brain. Uh, I want to get into more of the, uh, we're, this is kind of our raw series. And we bounce back and forth. But um, we're Keep gonna, up, folks. Yeah, we're going to yeah. have on the website, uh, and you can go to higherdensityliving.com. We'll have on there... Um, the whole raw series. So as we do something with raw, we'll put a big collection of them all correct um, on there. But uh, I want to get into this social memory complex. It sounds so weird. Uh, I, here I want to kind of set you up, Alex on um, the stages of evolutionary planetary civilization. Yeah. And it, it, we should make this a, like abundantly clear raw comes through as a single voice, a single message in this channeling stream. But it is a social memory complex, which means that there are multiple consciousnesses coming together to elevate the thought power of that stream to deliver a single message. Mm. Think about the power of that. It's almost, um, it's akin to, say we took every computer across the globe, every supercomputer, all of them, everything, and we had them only focus on one specific task. We want you to figure out how to solve this problem. We as human beings give it all the inputs and then it does the solve and gives out the message. In the physical form, that's what you could imagine that social memory complex to be like. And right now we're, we're slowly elevating to that point where if we consider the internet itself, albeit used quite poorly, you know, it's not really, it's, it's not, if you think about the internet, it's not really used for the greatest value it could be used for at all. No. No. People are just, it's pretty much a big profiteering machine right now. But, if we took that decentralized effort and the internet acting as this pseudo consciousness where everyone's essentially uploading their information, thoughts, behaviors, everything to it, imagine if we had a way to grab all that information and collectively put it together to deliver a specific message or mm. focus on one specific thing. That makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I'm getting what you're saying. So you're, you're saying even though it's external um, and whether we get into AI, how we get into that, but that will act as a collective consciousness. Correct. Um, and so the input data in data out, you know, so the input that we are garbage in garbage out, you know, that mm -hmm. whole statement. So the input that we put into the internet and with the ability of machine learning would allow um, us to solve the world's biggest problems. Right. So if we have a focus, I don't I don't keep using the word collective, but if we have a focused collective effort on one specific thing that can then be solved. We are our own worst nightmare. <laughs> I say that because we, we create our own problems. We do. But raw in its social memory complex, it sits right. in this range of sixth density. All right. It's evolving. But it's now left that idea of a physical connection. So our internet is more of the physical sense of what's actually happening in consciousness. Mm, yes. For this, this raw collective. But, but when I, when we look at planetary civilizations, I want us to pull back and look mm, at... I love when yeah. you say planetary civilizations. <laughs> oh. And I want us to get back, look back and look at our universes, mm -hmm. um, not just this one, and see that there are a lot of other planetary civilizations out there in different stages Correct. of this. So um, you have two polarities. And one is predominantly, Ooh. if you do 80-20, let's just, I'll just throw that out there. 80% is of a positive nature. They actually said it's 90-10. Is it 90-10? Yeah. Oh, okay. And 10% is of the, um, is of the, uh, you know, negative. Negative service. So let's, let's, yeah. So let's go into, let's go into other planetary 
civilizations. And then let's go into how a planet goes from, you know, how, how, how does it go from second to third to fourth, from first, second, third? Let's, let's do it this way. Let's start at... Um, Section 11, question I, 17. I have, this, I have this. So let's start at eight density creation in and of itself. Very nice. All, all is one. And let's go backwards. Okay. So if you're at creational level, eighth density, you've leveled up to the maximum. You've become one with the thing that actually gave you the ability to level up. So you're sitting there in this upper realm. Okay, now I'm going to take a step below that. So I'm, I'm not at, I'm at creation. Now I'm going to go into seventh density. Yeah, and so th- these are expressions of creation that are fractal doubt. Oh, Should we look God. at it that way? <laughs> Bad boy. Because, because it's not, it's not, because what people, I don't want people to think that these densities are separate. They're not. They're all. It's, it's in a way that creation is expressing himself through reflections. Oh, man. <laughs> like mirrors. Fantastic. You know yeah, what I mean? It's not actually, we need to separate things in our mind to help understand it. But when you start to leave the physical realm, you don't think in a sense of separation. You think no. in a sense of everything being combined in itself. So we're just going to put this in a, vis- a mental visual thought form hierarchy for your understanding. So at the eighth level, you have creation. You are with creator energy. That's all you sit in. You're timeless at that point. You become one with the thing that you were before. So you're essentially not even yourself anymore. You just are creation. Underneath that, you have seventh density. In that seventh density, you act as a creational being. So you're starting to learn what it means to be a creator. You do form planets. You do form life forms. You're doing these things of that nature, but you are not creation itself where it can create a whole universe. It can just spark energy, just pure thought, intelligent, infinite thought, right? And then underneath that, you have sixth. And again, this is an immaterial form. It's, it's a function. It's the fine fluid element. Yeah, six, sixth entity is, is unity. Yeah, it's this idea of total unity. It's this idea right. of oneness. So that means not only in the, you know are you together as entities in a oneness, but your, cl- right. your consciousness is in a oneness also. It lives in a sense of unity. There are no paradoxes at that level. Fifth density underneath that, right? You become very advanced technologically. Yeah, and, and this is, and Raw describes it as like light and wisdom. Yeah, it's light and wisdom, right? So remember I said advanced technologically. You're starting to move into that vibrational plane of being part physical and actually part light. You're, you're, you bleed between the both of them, right? right? The physical self has evolved so much and also the capability of your wisdom has evolved to that rate also. So you're sitting in that specific density. And then underneath that, you have quite an advanced technological civilization with that is great is very wise but is albeit quite physical and that's in the fourth density yeah which is love which is the density of love and understanding because when you have understanding and you apply that through your experience that creates wisdom and then underneath that where you see us right now and trying to transition out of is the third density self-awareness self-awareness i'm aware that i am a human being or not a human being i'm aware that i'm an entity i'm aware that i have internal thoughts i understand i have emotions and I, i need to learn how to control those specific things does that make sense? Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. Right, and then uh, second density, I mean, we're at third now, but second density is just kind of like movement. Yeah, it's, uh, I wouldn't call it primal distortions, but second density is more animal, plant-like things. Yeah, yeah. And it's not to say that a plant... Without awareness. Yeah, yeah without that self-awareness. But And it's not to say that a plant couldn't evolve in probability. Right, right. It can, right? And then underneath that, you have just primal energy. Yeah, first is beingness. Yeah, it's just being, like a rock. A yeah. rock is a rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know it's what first I mean? density. Yeah. Lava is lava. Air is air. Water is water. Chemical being chemical. So so we have these densities. That was fun. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I really right. enjoyed so, that. so we have these densities. <laughs> yeah. And then we have these two polarities. And we have all these ETs, extraterrestrials. That's what we call them here, mm-hmm. you know, aliens, they're whatever. They're off the earth, so they're extraterrestrial. Yeah, and so we have all these ETs, and we have these planetary civilizations that have different polarities. Yeah. So, and then you have the Confederate group, the Orion group, you know, and you have all those. Orion groups, the negative, they're the 10%. Yeah, the Guardians. Why is there, <laughs> so I want people to understand, the, the reason that there's only 10%, and this is very important, the reason that they're only 10% is because love light always builds Mm -hmm. so whenever your service to self the negative side it disintegrates negativity disintegrates so so they're actually disintegrating so as they're trying to evolve in that service to self path right that distortion is um debilitating for them spiritually and physically and that's why they're required to like essentially leech their energy off of other civilizations Yeah, it just takes a lot of work to be negative it takes a lot of work (laughs) 
but the thing is, it's, you know, again, like Rob would say, it's creation learning itself. It's one of those fine distortions, right? And it's whether, I actually got a text the other day from my father. And uh, he's, Here we go. he's really into these books, but he left me this quote. And this was just out of the middle of nowhere. Let me find him right here. Um, it says, I am Ra, we can speak only in metaphor. They were asking about uh, choosing a path of service to self. Some love the light, some love the darkness. It is a matter of the unique and infinitely various creator choosing and playing among its experiences as a child upon a picnic. Some enjoy the picnic and find the sun beautiful, the food delicious, the games refreshing, and the glow with the joy of creation. Some find the night delicious, their picnic being pain, difficulty, suffering of others, and the examination of the perversities of nature. These enjoy a different picnic. All these experiences are available. It is the free will of each entity which chooses the form of play, the form of pleasure. So when you look at that, you can understand that through that choice, you know, um, it may create a lot of energy to look at what those perversions are because you have to control other people, control other entities. You have to figure out how to drain these things and then absorb it rather than live in this state of abundance. You think only in a state of limitation. And it's not that it's wrong. It's just a choice that someone makes. And so when you get to a certain stage of density, when you start to move to a stage of unity into that sex, that sixth density area, it becomes nearly impossible or very, very, very improbable for a collective of people to take on that negative orientation at that point because you have to move into unity. Mm, yes. Your wisdom, you become so wise that you're like, this can't work any further. It doesn't make logical sense for us to take that next step or to be able to move into that next step with the amount of wisdom that we have, even though we have had a very service to self negative orientation. Now it's time for us to make that choice. And Ra had, speaks about how social memory complexes, it's rare. They said, I think they said it's only happened once in their total knowledge of a group going from fifth to sixth negative. That's it. They said the difficulty is too much. The amount of energy required is too great. And I think that's something that's, you know, really quite interesting, but we have a choice of transition for ourselves. So it's important for us to understand, in, even in this episode, the idea of what that social memory complex is. And we'll try and apply some metaphors to actually move through that. Yeah, and I want to get into uh, density of light Ooh. and then how higher consciousness evolved. Oh. So when we're looking at this social memory complex and we look into density of light, yeah. So, um, and then how higher consciousness evolved. So each of these, uh, so a distortion, we talked about this yesterday. So let's go, let's go into distortion because they mentioned picnic of darkness and all that. So I, cause I want to, I want people to understand it in kind of more of a, um, I, like it's more of a factual scientific way on the density of light. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Okay, yeah, I, this is You good. see what I'm saying? I, I'm on it. I'm I mean, on you it. Can, you I can got go it. to light. I got we it right go, now. We can Let's, go into light. We'll look at physics. Right. Okay. So in the previous episode, we talked about that propagation of light through a medium. Right. It is perfectly coherent white light. All right? And it comes out and gives me a spectrum of the rainbow color. Now, if I put those back together in perfect order, going through a prism again, an optical prism, that inversion, I create white light again. Mm -hmm. What happens when I change up the order? What color do I get? black right it's like an artist mixing all yes. the colors so now because of my lack of coherence my lack of unity right mm -hmm. the lack of that structure and bringing together properly now i've created essentially darkness is this making sense yeah no, no that makes perfect sense yeah so just in it, the it's idea the coherence so you're what? just so if you distort that coherence right you get darkness mm. so every time you step away from unity through a distortion mm. of the yeah. law of one you're creating some sort of negative polarity or darkness, right? Mm. It will create a learning, but then you have to bring these things back in line to get that that white light. So the better you align these things, the, the stronger the coherence, the mm. denser the amount of light is that is coming through it. So really how the amount of lumens of white light that are shining. So this light that would come onto, let's say, the earth, 
um, this light that comes on because the information travels to the light. That's how Raw was able to speak. Correct. Um, so that information is coming through and the density of it is what creates this higher conscious elevation as we, as a group of people begin to think, yeah. you know, in love and light. Well, we, we essentially have the ability to absorb yes, more, more yes, of that. Yeah. So are the density, so the, the, when you think of spiritual density. Absorb, that's a great word. Yeah. Like a sponge. Like a sponge, right? You can take information, but you can also give it out mm. at a maximum value. You shine brighter. It's, it's actual, it's a spiritual luminescence. And the denser a light source is, the brighter it becomes. If I lack, um, if I put a filter over these studio lights we have right here, I diffuse them. Mm. It becomes very soft. It, it's not, it doesn't become as like jarring and like, like, oh my gosh, that's so bright because it lacks the density of photons that are moving through it. But if we increase that density of photons, it becomes super bright. There's so much luminescence that comes with it. So just in the idea of physics, when we talk about spiritual density, if knowledge and information is transferred within light, okay, and I can have a huge density of it, that means I have a massive capacity for wisdom. So as I walk around and experience this world and share that experience with others, the essentially the amount of lumens are increasing. Mm. You shine brighter right. by yourself and as a collective. So I want to get into, because you, you've been using the word unity a lot, and this is very, very important. Um, and this is be practical. Unity, not conformity. Yeah, what, Big difference. Yeah, conformity means that someone's telling you how to live and you need to fall in line to whatever that thing might be. Unity is this idea that I understand I have a free will and I understand that I want to understand that you are a human being and how you interact. And how is it that I bring ourselves together even though we have very finite differences of who we are and how we live our lives? So unity is really something that has happened through the choice of free will, not by someone telling you you have to be a group or you have to go here, or you have to conform and go to this concentration camp, or you have to conform to our specific laws of this government. Unity is a free will choice of people coming together in love and understanding to say, we are a collective. Mm. We are a group. Right. That is unity. Unity can't happen by force material structure. It also is a function of thought. Yeah, third density would be war, um, control, Yes. You know, you know, all of that. So when we look at the globe, the earth, because that's who's listening to this, everybody here. Thank you, everyone. Um, and we look at these world issues and we look at fourth density, fifth density earth here. Earth. And we see, we begin to see science expanding consciousness, metaphysical um, technology. Yeah. Fourth and fifth density begins to get exciting. Yeah. That's in exactly. that realm. You know, we've, we've talked about this before and you know, this has been, I'm always a, a big proponent for speaking about this is that for so long, our technology has evolved so quickly. Mm -hmm. But why haven't we evolved? We, have, we are not doing a good job of evolving ourselves. But if you can bring technology to the evolution of a human being, and technology isn't created for technology's purpose, but for the benefit of evolving a human being, now you have something really special going on. But that, that's what happens in fourth and fifth density. That's, that's how we're going to be. That's we're going to be, all of our energy will not be, all the money will not be used for war and stuff. It would be used for expanding consciousness. It's for expanding consciousness. It's for understanding and measuring that consciousness and seeing how we can apply that study of the spirit or fine fluidal realm to actually affect this material life. That's the interesting part. How do we work at something at a more um, influential level than just the atomic level. So there would be, in a fourth or fifth density, there would be no human trafficking, there would be no killing of animals. Because people at that there point, would be we know none better. of that. Yeah, exactly. It's no, longer, it's no so, longer necessary. So all the money that we use to police and do war and all these things, um, all would be put into, everything would be put into all of us together, yeah. elevating the globe. But think about how our consciousness. This is this is real. This is great. That's think what I'm about, saying. I want to kind of go this there. Sort of like utopian structure. But at that point, now you have very few things that are actually limiting your growth capacity. Yes. Your evolutionary curve accelerates. It becomes incredible at that point. Almost like like logarithmic. This thing is just like almost going straight up. Right? And when you when you look at something like that, now you're like, wow, we have less hindrances. Now we can evolve much faster than we were actually evolving at such a slow rate before. And because we've married the ability of our technology with the growth of our consciousness and our spirit, look at us as a civilization. Look at all the great things we can create. And now it then becomes a question of testing. Mm. Let's test this. Let's test the experiences. We've done it individually. Now let's test it as a collective group. 
And then you all become so wise that are like, well, why are we doing this separately? We should do this all together. No, that, that makes sense. And so this is something I know you're going to get excited about. This. I'm freaking excited. So when we get uh, the group mind, which is the social memory complex, and we have its fourth, fifth density, we're tens of thousands, millions of years in, in the future. It's this social me- memory complex. That's this group mind. Now we begin to speak with telepathy. And we're seeing it now. People are there are certain people that are being able to have this in a very rudimentary way. Yeah, no, in a super rudimentary way. And the he, the best way I would describe is just even through my own personal experience. If I'm doing a road trip with we all drive a lot. And when you drive, you sometimes just like fall into the surrounding area. And I don't want to, that sounds terrible, but you're almost like, oh, "Holy shit, how did I get here?" Mm-hmm. You know? Like you don't realize that like so much time has gone by, but in that sort of state of not having like a thought, but just kind of driving and observing, I usually tend to have shared thoughts with Amanda. She's in like the passenger seat and I will think something and she'll think it and we'll both say it at like the same time. And so there's, there's this sort of connection that happens when the thoughts move out of the way. We've actually learned that through a state of quieting the mind, as you evolve to that state, whatever it might be, you have sort of that telepathic communication those shared thoughts. And when the thoughts truly become shared, now you're taking a step towards a social memory complex. Mm, yes. Now yes, we're yes. receiving and sharing thoughts telepathically. I don't necessarily have to speak anymore. I can sit here and deliver an image and a feeling to you, which is a million times more powerful than me having to speak or describe what a sunset is. I can literally give you that image in my mind and the emotion I had for that sunset. And now you can really understand empathetically who I am and how I feel. Isn't that quite incredible? And you'll see this, you know, that that telepathic communication is starting to increase. And the Stanford Research Institute did a lot of work on this in the 70s and 80s. They were trying to figure out like this idea of remote viewing and then also the shared thoughts between people. You can actually see what's going on. It's just that we do a very poor job of, you know, dipping into it. And there's been yogis in the past that have been, Mm -hmm. you know, quite telepathic. Right, right. Right, because they practice that one specific skill. But we, if as a collective, begin to recognize that if our scientific instruments are sensitive enough, we can record that information. We can record thoughts. The thing is, we don't have the ability to do that because we haven't been measuring that realm that sits right here uh, against this material realm that we're currently living in. So this group mind becomes a social memory complex and then they begin to speak through telepathy. But I want people to understand, in fourth and fifth density, you're still holding yourself as an individual. Mm-hmm. You're just an extension of the group mind. That's exactly correct. So now you realize that you're always connected to it. You still you do have your individualized form. You still have free will. You still have your free will. Just because you're part of a social memory complex doesn't mean you can't do what you want to do. It's just, a cho- it, we're all making a choice to be a part of that complex. Which, when I understood that, it simplified this so, this is the one thing that I, that made it so simple for me, because I like clear and concise. Yeah, I know you do. I don't like that lo-fi stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but this, this. Only hi-fi. For you. <laughs> yeah, only hi-fi for me, those hi-fi systems, of which we keep looking at and yeah. um, lusting over. It's $250,000 speakers and stuff. Oh, it's man, crazy. those things are nice. So, uh, whenever I begin to look at this, how it made it simple for me is... It's depending on the awareness of my oneness. Correct. So if I'm third density, there's self-awareness there. Of self. Of self. Of It's just self. But as far as that social memory complex or the oneness of creation, yeah. that is very, very small percentage. Totally new bridge. And then very as, as that, I yeah. begin to move and evolve, then hopefully as we're evolving, that's what we should do or else we'll just come back and redo it all over again. No matter how many mistakes you make, you're always in a state of evolution. Yeah, and people need to understand this. Majority of people just come back into another form, state their density, and then go to fourth. Raw yeah. talks about that. There are a few that will go to fourth, graduate and go to fourth density. Yep. And um, and they will come back, if they're fourth density positive, which 90% of people are, they will come back to the earth. Yeah. If you're third density, you may go to another planet. Because they come back and they're like, oh, they, you know, this earth is then well suited for the vibrational level that I'm at. Yes. And so as third density people finish out their lives, they'll move to a new planet that is more beneficial to their vibratory pattern that they choose to stay at. So, so now I can catch myself and say, um, uh, I know, uh, yeah, the bug awareness of creation. So an awareness of, 
uh, am I, what am I doing right now? Am I aligning with creational laws? Am I, am I living nature? Mm -hmm. You know, am, and so then I say, no, I'm going against that right now. Oh, okay. Well, I have a choice, hundred percent responsibility. That's on me, Jason. I have a choice to change that right now. Yeah. So let me give love and light. That's let me serve others. Yes. And then I know I'm on the right path. And however my evolutionary process is, if I got to get another meat suit and do whatever, the, whatever it doesn't matter. But it's very, very simple when you really, I know raw can be confusing sometimes because it is a social memory complex but speaking to us. Read it quite that a is, few times. Yeah, that is way ahead of us. Yeah. So it's beautiful that we have this information. It's like always trying, always essentially trying to dumb it down. Yeah. So this awareness of oneness, uh, when we get into uh, awareness, because I think that's where most people are at right now, and we've done several episodes on this, so I kind of want to close it out in this, Alex, if you can. Um, what, what, what do you when you when you personally are meditating or are you as faced with a situation? How do you dissect things with creational laws and awareness? Yeah, no, very good. So the first thing I always ask myself even if it's something is I'm perceiving as super difficult, I ask myself, what is it that has to be learned? Mm. What is it that I've missed before that has now come with a lot of energy to be like, now it's time to really make a change. Mm, yeah, that's good. I like that. I have to dig down deep internally to figure out what is this deep seated rooted thing, whatever it might be that I need to learn from in my awareness and then not come back and make that mistake or error again. Yeah, that makes sense. That's the first step. And then after I've done that, right, I just move through the meditation and be like, oh, okay, this makes more sense. And now I can live in the energy of that understanding. I can feel, you feel into it. You intuit into it at that point. What needed to be learned? Oh, I learned it. Now I'm back to that equalized sense of calm. This distortion or catalyst that has come to me was a little bit jarring. Why was that jarring? Mm. What is actually going yes, on? Yes, I get you. It's forcing me to be aware. And it's really, is hammering me. It's like telling you, hey, time to figure it out now. And that's what it does. It's like, I learn hard and I, I learn hard and I learn, I learn fast. Right. And I learn fast because of how hard those lessons are so quickly. And if I take the time to focus on them, great things can come from it. And then the application of, oh, thank you for teaching me that I needed to learn that. I thank myself for that. Now I'm like, what creational laws are applied to sort of this environment? What was missed that caused this catalyst to come in beer and be essentially so aggressive, so energetic? What needed to be equalized? Where was the chain of cause and effect that led up to this moment where I was not paying attention? What were my interactions with people around me or interactions within my own thought process? Mm, that makes sense, yes. Do, do you feel right, that? Right, right, right. And then how can I be loving at that point? How, how, how do yeah. I unify with it? And my yeah. unification with it is me feeling into it, me intuiting into this feeling. I hope that's clear. No, it is. And I want to close out. I want to thank, uh, we have two sponsors, uh, Tartle.co, T-A-R-T-L-E.co. I encourage all of our listeners to go there, sign up. I mean, maybe uh, another thing I need to sign up on. Well, let me tell you. It's the last thing you need to sign up on. <laughs> exactly. Um, if you believe in what we've been talking about, um, this is a website that you need to sign up for, not just because they're our sponsor, uh, but because we believe in it 110%. And how we believe in it is this way. If you believe in climate stability, if you believe in educational access, if you believe in human rights, if you believe in government, corporate transparency, which, you know, we're seeing all these lower third density things happening, you know, and, and I don't think people are necessarily bad as much as they're just service to self. Yep. You know, I, I don't think there's this nefarious Luciferian reptilian thing going on. Everybody but. would also, <laughs> yeah, everyone would always. <laughs> we make jokes about it, but I, I just think it's just people just serving themselves. And Tartle.co is a, it's B Corp pending. Yep. Um, service to others. Yep. A corporation that is wanting to take the biggest seven issues that we face on this planet. We have 40 to 70 years, according to scientists, and take what you're already creating you're creating data daily and to be able to take your data, turn around, put it on this marketplace, allow other people to be able to purchase that data th with your free will. Um, you have the choice to say what you want to sell and what you don't want to sell. And then that you can choose to, if you need the money, you can choose to earn that money and keep it and, you know, PayPal it to yourself or you can give it to these seven big causes. So whether you got, $10 million or where you got a dollar, it does not matter. Everyone, it's altruistic. So everyone 
sign up for Tartle.co. That's T-A-R-T-L-E dot co. Yeah. Uh, we'd love that. And not that I condone texting and driving, but <laughs> if you're interested in having a nice, luxurious ride in a well-built Japanese car, yes, you can go to Quality Mazda here in Albuquerque, and you can find yourself a very educational process of learning about what it's like to get a new car. Mm, yes. Trade a car in. Understand the technology. Have people meet you where you are in the process of making those big choices in life. Yeah, and you go to qualitymazdanm.com, and they do everything online. So if you live in Colorado or Texas, and mm-hmm. um, they also service those uh, states also. So, you know, we have a lot of Colorado listeners. So Yeah, so shout out to... Uh, Arizona too, Sedona. Shout yeah. out. Anybody here? Yeah. Sedona. The Vortex. <laughs> shout we out to our it. Vortex folks. Get a quality <laughs> Mazda, you know. <laughs> You know, if they're uh, they're helping us put this message out here, they're probably doing something right. Yes, exactly. We need some uh, Confederate uh, uh, groups to come in and, and beam us up in a Mazda. Confederation, we, not yeah, Confederate. Confederate. Yeah. <laughs> Robert E. Lee, Stonewall Jackson. They were the Orion group. <laughs> now we know. <laughs> yes, exactly. And on that note, we are out of here. <laughs>